So today I want to talk about uh, possible contamination issues you can have with growing mushrooms. Uh, in this case today we're going to talk about blotch. Uh, blotch is something that I've encountered and I'm still, I'm still figuring out ways to minimize outbreaks and how to control it. And it seems to affect our colder species either in the spring or, or in the fall. So in this case I have a bunch of blue oyster blocks that I've pulled uh, that actually sorry that Clay and Reuben just pulled out of uh, Greenhouse 4 and they're all starting to show signs of blotch and you know any of this uh, discoloration this orange discoloration there and there so any, any of this orange discoloration is called uh, blotch or bacterial bacterial blotch and you know if what what happens is is this gets on your mushrooms because it's usually that uh, the the moisture wasn't right in the in the mushroom blocks and in this case uh, we use a lot of different wood types and we've noticed that elm seems to be one of the worst wood types because it it actually has more like a sappiness to it when we when we wet it and it stays uh, a lot wetter than I'd like so the moisture content uh, ends up not being correct and we end up getting pooling of sappy water in the bottom of the bag and then this can breed bacteria especially as the mushrooms start to grow so in this case these bags would have had a little bit too much of this uh, water residue in the bottom and then when we were moving it around from the lab and into the greenhouse that that water probably touched all sides of the bag and the mycelium is as is actually uh, is actually concentrating this this bacteria that's in the water and as a result we get blotch forming on the mushrooms as they start growing out now in the past I've uh, just harvested these mushrooms and thrown them out and left the blocks in the greenhouse to fruit but that doesn't really seem to do anything uh, if anything three weeks later if we don't manage this now uh, the blotch will get worse and then we just start losing yield because I don't want to sell mushrooms that have this uh, bacteria on it so to combat this problem this year we've removed all the blocks that are showing signs of it I'm gonna go through here now and harvest and sell what I can the rest is actually just gonna go right up to the compost pile and I'm gonna to try to remove it from this greenhouse completely we, we don't actually cut drainage holes in the bags anymore so there's really no need to worry about uh, this uh, this water transferring to other mushrooms so everything should be self-contained into these blocks and it's just identifying which blocks we should remove as uh, as so as as the blotch outbreak continues in a greenhouse flies can be a transmitter of this and they can transfer blotch to other blocks that actually don't have blotch on them or even uh, the uh, the cultivator the the person who's harvesting as he, as he's moving throughout the greenhouse he can be harvesting and touching the blotch on these blocks and then transferring it to other blocks so you know I I want to be really careful and I've harvested I've harvested all these mushrooms uh, from greenhouse three already I didn't even touch these blocks I got clay and Reuben to pull them out now I'm gonna go through and harvest these and try to save as much as we can and I'm hoping that uh, the blotch outbreak will be contained and I'll just have to monitor it in this greenhouse for whatever reason like I said it, it, it seems to uh, focus on a lot of our cold weather color oyster varieties so either like the tree oyster the blue oyster or gray um, any of any of the warmer weather species even like the pearl oyster that I grow don't don't seem to really be affected so certain mushroom species are affected more by this
This is all the, uh, the bacteria ooze from the sap of the wood that I was talking about. So this is on the bottom side of the bag. And when we were putting this in the greenhouse, this would have been all kind of mixed and touching the mycelium and then eventually it settled to the bottom when we put the block on the shelf. So this, this is what is causing blotch unfortunately. And I just need to get the proper moisture content and not use wood varieties that are going to encourage this. So Siberian Elm, I don't think I'm ever going to use again. greenhouse are where we pulled the blocks that had blotch but you can see it's not too bad other than that everything looks great in here really nice pin set these are all our blue oysters and then the pearl oysters are probably a few days ahead. They look great up here. And you know, I've never seen blotch with this strain, more just the blue oyster. Another thing I want to talk about is that <clears throat> the uh, the pin set is noticeably a lot better in uh, in the production that we have done the normal way compared to our overwintering. So I'll bring you into other greenhouse where we have blue oyster and really like the blocks are all just scattered for what is growing and nothing is as uniform as this greenhouse here and and uh, really like the uh, the production is pretty much caught up and these these blue oyster bags were put in the greenhouse around April 3rd and I initiated our overwinter production probably last week of, of March and you know nothing is even close to what I have in this greenhouse here so I'm still not entirely convinced if overwintering is really going to be better than just straight production straight production because I've only sold about 50 pounds so far and we had our overwinter uh, greenhouse uh, started mid-March and this greenhouse we initiated March 27th and it was completely full around uh, April April 3rd and you know the pen set in here is incredible I'll just quickly bring you into greenhouse three where we're overwintering and you know big difference not everything is fruiting uh, at the same time compared to uh, greenhouse four and this is all blue oyster here so I don't know I don't really feel like our overwintered blue oyster production is ahead and as cool as as cool as it is uh, to have these mushrooms fruit, if if we're not going to be that much further ahead for it, because now that we're catching up to the weather, I'm not really sure if uh, if this is something I want to continue with. I'm going to continue to to monitor and think about it, but that's kind of what's going on right now. So I'll keep everyone posted over the next few weeks with our overwintering and you know possibly these blocks will catch up. We are getting uh, sporadic mushroom growth so you know that might that might increase now that the weather is warmed up and uh, you know I'll make a decision if it's going to be worth it or not. It's still really cool that everything has survived uh, freezing temperatures but you can see there is a noticeable difference in uh, the greenhouse uh, that we have done normal production that we started in uh, end of February compared to the blocks that we let freeze and put in the greenhouse in December. We initiated 
our overwintering blocks two weeks ahead of uh, Greenhouse 4, but Greenhouse 4 is clearly caught up and if anything it's surpassed the production that we have in Greenhouse 3 at the moment. So, you know, possibly it's not even worth my time, but uh, obviously more research is needed and uh, I'll continue to do that. All right, we'll talk to you guys soon.